Hello everyone. Uh, today we are going to see Pauli's theory of paramagnetism. This is lecture number 7, unit 2, quantum st statistics, according to your syllabus, second MSc physics. So, uh, Pauli's theory of paramagnetism. So, normally, uh, when we discuss something, we consider that electrons are fixed in the crystal lattice. So, uh, and when we apply a magnetic field, uh, the electrons orientation are, uh, they orient in a certain direction and paramagnetism arises due to this. So, this is called um, paramagnetism, but Pauli's theory of paramagnetism is different. Pauli's paramagnetism is different because here, uh, uh, in the case of metals, you cannot consider that electrons are fixed in a certain crystal lattice. But you have the case of, as you all know, we have uh, free electrons. Free electrons in the conduction band. So, there are many electrons that are moving around in the conduction band. So, in the case of uh, uh, now, when you have these free electrons and then you apply a magnetic field. So, their spins reorient in a different way and the paramagnetism arising due to that is called Pauli's paramagnetism and Pauli's paramagnetism yeah so um, uh, so that all that is explained here uh, now the magnetic field or uh, magnetic moment of a free electron is given by this formula mu is equal to minus g mu b s so this g is a landis g factor and uh, it is almost the sign is uh, the value of this landis g factor is given by 2 it almost comes to a value of 2 and where mu b is the Bohr magneton this negative sign indicates that it is an electron now uh, this magnetic moment uh, magnetic moment of an individual free electron which when we apply a magnetic field it acquires an energy so when you apply a magnetic field the electrons have uh, electrons possess something called as a spin angular momentum so due to the spin angular momentum uh, there is a, uh, a magnetic behavior that arises uh, for the electron so then on due to this magnetic behavior and on top of that when you apply an external magnetic field um, there is a magnetic moment and for a, uh, for a single electron it is given by mu is equal to 2 mu b into s. So now due to this magnetic moment there is something called as a magnetic energy. So that is given by E is equal to mu dot b where b is the magnetic field. Mu is your magnetic moment that is given by this formula. Now um, in a magnetic field, electron can have two orientations which are parallel and anti-parallel to the field. So, the electron spin half, uh, two half spins are there. So, it can either be minus half, minus half or plus half depending on whether they are parallel or anti-parallel to the applied electric field. So, hmm. Now, according to the two configuration of magnetic energy, two configurations of the spin, the magnetic energy turns out to be E magnetic, the energy given by due to configurations of plus half and minus half is given by E magnetic is equal to mu b into b, mu b is a Bohr magneton. Now, when the external magnetic field is applied, what happens is all the electrons that have anti-parallel spin to the magnetic field. This is If this is the applied magnetic field, all the electrons that have anti-parallel spin and given by plus half is gets a higher energy. Okay. And little bit higher energy. That energy will be exceeding by mu b b. So, if you draw a graph, if you draw a graph, if this is the k vector and the magnetic energy for the electrons is shown by this curve. Okay. So, this curve when, now this is before applying the magnetic field, the curve will look like this. So, this is the energy and this is your wave vector k. So, your energy for a normal electric electron in the absence of the magnetic field will be like this but once the magnetic field is applied it shifts this there is a 
higher shift in the electrons with anti parallel spin and uh, the electrons with parallel spins to the magnetic field applied magnetic field or minus half their energy will be reduced by mu b b here energy is increased by mu b b and here energy is reduced by mu b b okay so this is this configuration is corresponding to the spin of the electron whether it is plus half or minus half okay and it happens in the case of uh, in the case where we apply an external magnetic field now the system does not like something that is unbalanced like this so at fermi energy it tries to bring it back it tries to bring back these things okay and there is a net magnetization because of this factor oh some the system tries to balance it back and why this imbalance happens is mainly first reason is because of the density of states so density of states is given to you by this formula this formula right here we have already done all this so now because of the density of states changes for spin uh, anti parallel spin and parallel spin because of the fact that it changes the consequence of this will be what will happen the concentration of electrons with um, spin up uh, will will be different from concentration of electrons with spin down so in the spin up band where all the electrons with spin up occupy and the spin down band all the electrons with spin down occupy there will be a split and it will be different so this is the difference so um, now we have to see the formulas so this is n n uh, written using density of states for spin up okay so this is half um, from mu b b to uh, fermi energy up till the fermi energy this is the density of states e plus mu b b so here the energy is uh, increased okay so and the presence of ma of an applied magnetic field uh, in the, the so this energy is increased so as you saw in that graph there is a shift in the energy in the upward direction that is e plus mu b b so this much is the mu b b and why this half this half is given because only half of the electrons are having this spin other half of the electrons are having uh, the opposite spin down so this is a formula for spin down so this is a number of electrons uh, having the spin down so that is another half this is one half and this is another half and the formula is written from this mu b b to uh, energy e f okay so concentrations of dif uh, are different because density of states are different so in the absence of magnetic field concentration will be equal that means the graph will be like this no difference but in the presence of the net uh, presence of the magnetic field what will happen we, we should consider the difference between these concentrations so then you have the total net as like this so you this formula so we already saw the formula for density of states d of e so that one i have substituted here and just only things that are separate is this one and this one integral so 0 to f e plus half mu e plus mu b b whole raised to half d e um, so you substitute just you subtract these two equations and write the value of density of states so from that um, considering this case for small magnetic fields and using binomial theorem so this square root can be expanded as this so you can work it out by yourself it's already worked out here but you can try it out by yourself so you will get the total concentration to be this value applying binomial theorem expanding this square root okay and considering the fact that the magnetic field is very small magnitude you can get this value of n okay now finally you got this value of n and this is the fermi energy here okay i hope it's clear ef0 whole raised to half now we have to find what will be the magnetization magnetization is given by the formula n the concentration multiplied by the more bohr magneton okay so now we have the formula for already we know the formula for fermi energy is given by this now to solve to bring this equation in to bring to make this equation into an uh, appreciable form what we have to do is you have to uh, you have to change i mean you have to substitute certain things now this ef0 
so i'm going to substitute for this ef0 whole raise to half this ef0 whole raise to half i am going to write it as ef0 whole raise to half multiply and divide by the same value okay so now ef0 this this whole thing this whole thing whole raise to half this whole thing whole raise to half will be given by this okay so i'm simplifying it and then i'm multiplying and dividing by the same ef0 but here i am going to just keep the denominator ef0 the same and write the value of ef0 again that is this value okay then after that you simplify simplify everything is written here finally you will get ef0 whole raised to half as this value okay then what you have to do you have to resubstitute it here and then put it back here and find the magnetization okay So, okay. So, what will you get? So, you have magnetization m is equal to n into mu b. So, this value of n just we got previously. I am going to just substitute it here. So, when you substitute here, this one and this one will cancel. Finally, this eight pi and four pi will cancel and remaining two. So this three n will remain, E F zero will remain, two will remain, and mu b square b will remain. So that is what I have written here. So magnetization m is equal to uh, this value. Okay. Now magnetic susceptibility can be given by magnetization divided by b or the magnetic field that is given by this value. Okay. So now uh, this fact about this Pauli's paramagnetism uh, that cannot be observed uh, in the laboratory physically because of the fact that uh, there are two three other factors. There is diamagnetism from the iron cores and Landau's diamagnetic susceptibility. All this happens because of the orbital motion of the electrons around the nucleus. So because of this, it masks the effect of this Pauli's paramagnetism. So it is very difficult to observe this uh, in the case of, uh, I mean, in like experimentally. So because of this diamagnetism uh, due to the iron cores and Landau's diamagnetic susceptibility, all these factors, total magnetism, it masks the um, paramagnetic susceptibility. And also you should know that uh, this Pauli's paramagnetism is an important concept in superconductivity. Uh, where uh, you apply this for the case of uh, Cooper pairs. So if you are interested, you can further read about this. Okay, this much for this lecture. Thank you.